Hey, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a lead technical advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. Hey, everyone. Matt DiNapoli here. I'm the head of developer strategy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to a special episode with my VP, Par Marat. We're here to talk to you about AI. My name is Par Marat, as you just heard, I'm the vice president of learning and certifications, and I'm delighted to be here. As we look at how AI can be applied um, for generating insights in the predictive manner, but also um, helping us, uh, you know, build uh, whatever it is, application deployments, networks that support application deployments. There's this concept of of uh, security that we have to put into all of these layers. And, um, you know, the term that always gets thrown around, which another one that makes me a little queasy is this concept of shift left. <laughs> um, but pushing the responsibility forward um, in the process of putting the relation or the the responsibility, I should say, on the developers and software architects as they're building those applications out and passing that across through the infrastructure architects. How how is Cisco U um, and learning and certifications addressing that kind of experience and kind of saying, hey, all these things that you've had to worry about before, they might be shifting, but you need to understand what what's going on with them. I think it's really important, and we touched on you know, the, the idea of, a, of doing this in partnership, humans doing this in partnership with AI. And one of the things that I'm, I'm really proud of is the way that Cisco is approaching AI, because we're approaching this from a uh, responsible fashion, meaning we are making sure that we have the human checks and balances. Uh, we're doing that to ensure that the AI-based decisions are fair, they're unbiased, and they're ethical and moral. And, and we believe with our products and our solutions, just from a, um, a, a principle standpoint, that AI is going to augment human decision making, but it is not going to replace it. And that's because you absolutely need the skills uh, to be able to do that. You know, as I mentioned, we, you know, all of our solutions, many of our solutions are already using predictive AI. But to, to be specific about, you know, what the skills are in this world um, that are needed as they're coming along with security and the importance of security, you're still going to need those security policies. You're going to need to understand what they are. You're going to need to understand what's behind access control, network protection, firewall configuration, um, not to mention VLAN segmentation. And so the role of the network engineer becomes even more critical. At the end of the day, uh, the network engineer is responsible for these policies. They're responsible to be able to do incident response and these need to be nuanced uh, and understood and appropriate because you've got to make sure that you are meeting the needs of your organization and the outcomes that your organization and the compliance and the processes that your organization is, in, is putting in place. So really, again, it is very uh, important that people continue to lean in and not replace your sidekick with knowledge or not replace your knowledge learning with the sidekick <laughs> other way around um, so that you you know what you're doing and you have the capabilities to understand it uh, and to leverage it accordingly. And th so that's from a security perspective, Par, and uh, you touched a little bit here on um, from a predictive that Cisco, predictive AI that Cisco has had predictive AI in our solutions for a long time, right? And this is where, you know, the whole full stack observability and observability comes in play because you have all these products that come together that send, that can predict what might happen with your network, where the latency is, and putting all of that, aggregating that data together, not, doesn't only give you monitoring, but now you're observing, which means you're you're predicting what's going to happen in the future based on historical data. So, can you tell us a little bit? And I know, I know, we uh, we just uh, released a blueprint for this. So, can you tell us a little bit? <laughs> what are we doing from uh, a learning and certification perspective with this whole predictive AI and, and, and enabling our um, full stack or observability in general for our network? As you mentioned, um, we just introduced our enterprise network assurance specialist certification. And it is training on how do you, you're validating that you have the skills 
um, to take AI, AI data collection, predictive AI data collection uh, and data analysis and understand the insights around it and what to do with it and how to design and uh, architect the network so that you can dig into that observability. So all of these things, in addition to other training that we have in Cisco U, we are leaning in, we're making sure that it is robust. We're making sure that, you know, we we use our own predictive uh, AI and Cisco U to personalize this training. As the network engineer role expands and evolves, there is much more that needs to be understood. We mentioned shift left. We're now mentioning uh, observability. These become incumbent upon our community to understand and learn. And so within Cisco U, we're providing it in a way that is uh, personalized. You don't have to start, you know, at a beginner standpoint, if you already have some skills. We've got assessments that you can go in, jump into where you need to be, and learn from there at your own pace and specific to the knowledge that you need to obtain. So we're we're well prepared uh, to help our community move forward on topics like AI, on topics uh, both predictive AI and generative AI. With the large networks and the, and the AI workloads that are needed on networks and especially in data centers, uh, we've actually updated our CCIE to re-highlight uh, AI relevant topics around ROCEV2 and low latency. And this is stuff that Cisco's wow. been doing uh, for a long time. So mm -hmm. we're, again, what's old is new again. We're, we're putting it back in place, highlighting it because it is even more relevant now. And, and again, we've got, we've got the training within Cisco U to, to cover that um, and, and evolve it. So hopefully you haven't missed out too much. And Kareem, you were going to, you were going to jump in. So go ahead. I couldn't have said it better. We've been Cisco's been doing lossless networks for a long time, right? In our data centers, with with our Nexus, we've been building this. We've been designing and architecturing for this. So it's, you know, from a Cisco perspective, we've always been ready with to to dump like all this massive AI traffic coming from the LLM and rebuilding that, building these uh, large uh, language models. But for me personally, I'm a little bit hesitant to still kind of dive all in on the. On the whole generative AI, I think it's cool. Um, I think there is um, kind of a, a, a aspect to it that that is still kind of like the shiny new toy that everybody's excited about, but it's not really there for me yet. I'm I I like the predictive side of the AI because we have a lot of um, actual substantial use cases around using those predictive AIs and what we see from with our customers. So, you know, using that for observability, using that for, you know, looking at data and making decisions based on that. Um, the one thing that I have to do say that um, that I do actually really enjoy using is the um, kind of the code sidekick um, in your IDE. That That is really huge, whether, you know, I'm writing a tutorial or writing a piece of code for a tutorial, it probably cuts my... Uh, my time by 30% of, of releasing these. So that's, you know, that's kind of what uh, as far as far and as, <laughs> as deep I get with, uh, with GPT in general. But I know we are in a little bit long here, Par. Um, we can keep talking about this AI for a really long time. So maybe we can have you back on here um, on Snack Minute to talk about the next iteration of our training to, that covers AI that we're, we're planning on releasing. You know, it's always a pleasure to have you on Snack Minute. And uh, thank you, Snackers, for sticking around. Yeah, thank you, Park. Thank you.